my fellow Ambazonians, this is Dr. Cho Ayaba. Yesterday, the National Security Council of the Ambazonian Governing Council met in an enlarged session comprising of the executive of the AGOFC, the executive of the Defense Council, the policy chiefs, and the communication chiefs. We met to review the current trend of events as far as our war of independence is concerned. We took stock of the recent threats to our forces on the ground, the declarations made by Mr. Sako and his communications chief, Mr. Anu. We examined past events, for example, attempted killing of General Arke of the British Southern Cameroon Restoration Forces, the kidnapping and disappearance of General Koraman, the conspiracy that led to the death of General Ivo. We took into account the incidents of Bui that led to the assassination of General Nginyam. We took into consideration the statement by Dr. Sako on the whereabout of the 23 fighters of the Ambazonian Defense Forces and Sister Forces. We looked at their trend in terms of relationship with other movements, the impeachment of uh, Seseko, the building of persistent conspiracies against uh, Seseko, we took into consideration their declaration of war on the Amazonian Defense Forces, the inspiring of tribalism from Le Bialem, Bui, and Momo. We took into consideration the fact that the engineer civilian population to attack fighters. We also took into consideration the massive embezzlement of funds, public funds, collected to be directed to armed Amazonians. We took into consideration other secret deals being done with the Swiss HD and the deep involvement of the Swiss HD in some of the activities that they are doing and how those activities have emboldened the rhetorics of Mr. Sako and Mr. Chris Anu. We also took into cognizance the fact that there are several people working under them who are dissatisfied with all of these things and have been working extremely very hard to see that our forces can work together. We took into consideration the fact that these two men are the greatest problem that their own group face and that within that group they are reasonable people with whom we can still work to build cohesion on the ground and at the political level. And the National Security Council decided that the declaration of these people as infiltrators and spoilers is consistent with all of the actions that they have been uh, doing. Uh, fellow Amazonians, infiltrators are people planted in particular struggles to cause confusion, to cause in-house fighting for purposes that might be beneficial to them personally or beneficial to the opponent that we are fighting against. I want to remind every Ambazonian that I have been in this struggle for more than 30 years and I have worked with infiltrators before. The first chairperson of the Southern Cameroon National Council, Barista Ekontang Elat, after we had worked extremely very hard to mobilize our population and we had reached the moment 
to enlarge the SCNC and transform it into the Constituent Assembly of Ambazonia to declare its independence in 1995. Cameroon used a pastor in Boya to infiltrate the movement and change the trajectory of where we were headed to. Uh, Barista Ekontang abandoned the ship and left the country to the United States for purposes of head brain surgery. That is how the course was thwarted because of a leader who had acted like an infiltrator. It took us many more years. We of the Southern Cameroon's Youth League needed within the council a formidable leader who believed in the argument of force and the force of argument. And we met myself, Dr. Kwanga was there, late Dr. Yombang, late Chief Ayamba, late Pa Feko, we met in Boya and decided we were going to nominate late Ambassador Epier to take over the leadership. Little did we know that as we were meeting, other politicians were meeting to nominate Ambassador Fossum. And when we met in Boya to get a new leader for the council, the politicians won the day and Ambassador Henry Fossum became the chairperson of the SCNC and took the SCNC, which was the council for Ambazonia then, in the same direction of passivity and wasted time. At the end of the day, he became the president or the leader or the chairperson of the Boya University Parents Faculty Association that increased fees in the university. At that same time, when I opposed that PFA, it was under Ambassador Fosong that I was dismissed from the University of Boya. Fosong could not take the struggle further. We, again, the sacrificial generation, we took the struggle in a different direction. Late Pa Foncha called for a meeting between us and the SCNC to reconcile our differences and present a common program for our liberation. The SCYL went to that meeting with a blueprint for independence that clearly spelled out what we are supposed to do to free our people. The SCNC leadership came with nothing apart from the claim to power and the claim to the right to lead. We split from that meeting and moved our separate ways. We moved in to build the defenses and that led to the arrest of Dr. Akwanga in March of 1997 the attack in Kumbo, Jakiri, uh, Ye, and other places. From then, I began to live underground as a fugitive with Comrade Wana Benedict, who is now the chairperson of the Ambazonian Defense Council. I moved to Victoria, he moved to Mutengene, and we began on trying to rebuild the scattered forces. Myself and late Justice Ebon drove on a daily basis to Douala at the home of Dr. Yomba to hold meetings to see how we could revive the struggle, take it away from the hands of infiltrators and politicians. We moved from Dr. Yomba's house to the house of Pa Feko in Bonaberry. We held meetings there for a couple of weeks before transferring the meeting to Mutengene in the chambers of Barista Bruno. We rebuilt the structures and we created a revolutionary council and nominated Justice Ebong as the head, Dr. Yombang as the treasurer. From there, we started planning on how to take Radio Boya to declare independence at the dawn of the new millennium. In June of 1998, myself and the defense chair, we jumped onto a ship at the port of Douala that took us 30 days to escape the country. From Germany, we walk tirelessly to project Ambazonia with demonstrations, meetings across Germany, across Europe. We rebel the institutions that had been scattered by people who thought they were entitled to power and who thought, you know, you could fight a Cameroon using the force of argument. While in Germany, we were still working with the ground leadership. And 
another infiltrator came into the helm of the struggle. That is Ndoki Mukete. He was pushed as the new chairperson of the SCNC. He traveled to Germany. We had a series of meetings. He went back and moved to become the chairperson for Feka Foot, abandoned the struggle, sold out many ideas that we had worked on. Bringing you this history for you to understand why each time we identify infiltrators, each time we see the same signals and signs that we had seen before, we come across in a very strict manner to oppose them. Let me tell you something. If we fail in this revolution now, and we have to restart it 20 years again, many of you, will oppose most of the things that you are accepting today because you must have had the experience of living through them and experience of how they ended. It is this experience that informs sometimes the decisions we make. The experience of knowing politicians who infiltrate a struggle to hijack it for their own purpose. Experience of understanding when people do not understand what it will take to free a people. Experience of understanding when leaders do not understand what is at stake and what they need to do. These are the experiences that have guided actions that we have taken, that have informed our judgment. And in deciding yesterday to declare Sako and Chris Anu as infiltrators and spoilers, it is not only based on all of the things that they have done to derail our struggle, to cause infighting, to bring disrepute to our liberation struggle, to attack the integrity of others, to undermine others. Infiltrators do not coexist. Infiltrators want to govern and, and lead alone so they can take every struggle in the direction they determine. So they can never be held accountable in terms of how they acquire and use funds. Those are typical characteristics of infiltrators. And they always like to be at the top. Because it is from the top that they can derail. Remember Agwabala navigated his way skillfully to the top to determine the direction. These are classical characteristics you must observe. Some people have claimed the egg of sea and myself, we always want it our way or we want to do work alone. No, the experiences I've given you of more than 30 years did not occur why we were at the top. I serve Barista Elad. We left Moliko on a daily basis, moved to his home and hoisted the flag. I serve Ambassador Henry Fossum. I serve Justice Ebon. I serve Chief Ayamba. I serve John Frundi. I even spent time guarding him in 1992 when he was under house arrest. I stayed there for weeks. So all of these experiences have not been gathered when we were at the top. Even now, we are not still at the top. We consider ourselves as servant, vanguard of this revolution. Because we have been vanguard in the past 30 years when infiltrators captured the helm of our struggle and decided they were going to mortgage it for their own personal gains. Remember Simon Munzu? That was the spokesman of the SCNC who defended the SCNC. And when an opportunity showed itself for an international position, he changed his direction. They always want to be at the top. They always want to speak for everyone. Coexistence for them is unacceptable because coexistence means ideas are debated, directions are determined by collective consensus. I want to address this to all forces of the Ambazonian Defense Forces and forces that collaborate with the Ambazonian Defense Forces. We have learned in the past days that Mr. Sako, they have given orders for people to attack you. 
I have passed instructions to the defense and to our commanders. ADF camps are military zones. No one gets one kilometer close to an ADF camp. Not any sister force, not a civilian. Any civilian population engineered to use itself as a weapon against our forces defending the flag and the anthem will be considered as a military force and we will exercise our forces will exercise the right to defend themselves ADF forces on the ground must take every measure wherever they are to protect our population to defend themselves and take defensive and offensive action against any threat to their position that undermines them and consequently undermines the defense of our country at the political level we will pursue these guys expose them banish them from the body politics of our war of independence in most countries embezzlers of public funds that undermine the lives of people will be sentenced to death and this is what these two men, Sako and Chris Anu, the merit. Ambazonians, revelations are coming out every day on their activities. You have not even heard or listened to half of what they have done to harm our revolution. If we were not well armed, La Republic would have defeated us. We were destroyed before by infiltrators because we couldn't defend ourselves. The only reason they have not succeeded now is because we were wise. From the beginning, we went to arm our people. It has been difficult for La Republic to defeat us because of those arms. It has been difficult for the infiltrators to defeat us because of those arms. And that's why you must commit to arming the people. To defend the freedom that independence declared and restored. Fellow Amazonians, Infiltration is as old as revolutions. Ours is not unique. It is not trying to undermine others. You have seen what has happened to our collective endeavors. You have seen how soldiers, generals have been kidnapped. They have been killed. They have been blackmailed. Their sacrifices undermine for the sole interest of a few. The quest for money. The quest for their own individual survival. They have nothing to lose. They cannot tell you of any of their relations, their friends, or people they know who've lost their lives. If they had one, they would have respected our war of independence. It would have been personal. For them, it is some abstract struggle for independence. For us, it is about our existence. God bless Ambazonia.